mother of God. Identical. It's with all due to parents. After only one thing, your money. Joe, take a look at this. 416. He knows everything. See? It's just like me. A whole lot better. My ninja. Yes. What are they doing this to do? I can't stop them. Begs a more important question. Historical epics. I have a warrant in my pocket that says different. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for Colin Farrell's top 10 performances. Number 10, James Douglas Clayton, The Recruit. So you're a recruiter. That I am. Though the spy thriller endured mixed reviews, one of its few redeeming qualities is Farrell's ability to go head to head with a Hollywood heavyweight. Would I have to kill anyone? Would you like to? Farrell's Clayton is recruited to the CIA by Al Pacino's Walter Burke, and what follows is a game of cat and mouse that's filled with betrayal and deception. I don't work for the CIA. I think you do. Whether it's a physical or psychological test, Farrell proves he's up to the challenge. Yo, here's another option. Shoot me. Go ahead. Number 9. Tommy Sweet, Crazy Heart. While displaying his abilities as a character actor, Farrell also demonstrates his talent as a supporting player by propping up Jeff Bridges' Oscar-winning effort. You gave me my start, bad. I think I don't remember that. But I got a lot too. The Irishman's performance is a departure from his other work that shows he's willing to give up the spotlight when it matters, and that's what makes it such a surprise. Farrell manages to surprise us again when he takes the mic and can actually sing. This ain't no place for the weary Number 8. Syracuse on Dean. It's a pleasant change of pace to see Farrell tone things down, and his efforts in this adult fairy tale earned him an Irish Film and Television Award. He submits a moving portrayal of a sad fisherman with a sick daughter whose gloomy reality changes when he finds a woman in his net. Anybody out there? Need a little help? While Ondine's mysterious arrival brings fantasy and hope to their lives, it's Farrell's passion and quest for redemption that touch us most. How long are you staying? Depends, I guess. On what? On you. On me. It depends on me. You can stay forever. Number 7. Bobby Pellet, Horrible Bosses. To play one of the horrible bosses, Farrell transforms into a pot-bellied, balding tool with a bad coke and hooker habit. Oh yeah, we gotta trim some of the fat around here. Trim the... what do you mean by trim the fat? I want you to fire the fat people. What? They're lazy and they're slow and they make me sad to look at. It may be brief, but his role as part of this critically praised ensemble cast sure is memorable. The actor loses himself completely in the world of the self-important Bobby Pellet. Farrell's rarely seen comedic talents also help the film become one of the highest grossing black comedies ever. Now I'm sneezing dust bunnies. Is that diabetes? I'm a pharmacist, not a doctor. Is that my brain? Number six, Danny Whitwer, Minority Report. Though Tom Cruise is the star, Farrell more than holds his own in this Steven Spielberg sci-fi flick. Someone intends to kill his boss or his wife, but they never go through with it. How do the precogs tell the difference? Precogs have to see what you intend to do. Only what you will do. As the smug Department of Justice agent who initiates the manhunt for Cruz's Captain John Anderton, Farrell brings depth to an otherwise small but significant role. Daddy's in a lot of trouble, Sean. Thanks to its critical acclaim and millions in box office receipts, Minority Report is also one of Farrell's most commercially successful projects. Commits the murder in exactly the same way. Technician takes a look, thinks he's looking at an echo, erases it. Number five, Stu Shepard, Phone Booth. Did you call me Stu? Who's Stu? I don't know any Stu. Why do you prefer Stuart? Look, a lot of people in this neighborhood know who I am. Stuart Shepard, 1326 West 51st Street, third floor front. Go my some other guy, pal. While we might initially think the despicable two-timing Stu is getting what he deserves, Farrell manages to convince us otherwise as the film's plot unravels. Come on, Stuart, don't disappoint me. Use your imagination. You'd shoot me if you got the chance, wouldn't you? <laughs> With a big smile on my face. <laughs> There's the spirit. 
Held hostage in a phone booth by an unknown sniper, Farrell has to carry the film pretty much on his own. Somehow he ends up making us feel for his character and gives us a gripping and intense thriller in the process. I'm the what you want! Take me! This is about me! Come on! Number 4. Bobby Morrow, A Home at the End of the World In this drama, Farrell goes against type with a soulful role that puts him in the middle of an unconventional love triangle. Do you think I'm attractive? Oh, I, uh, that's what I thought you were going to ask. And yes, I, absolutely I do. Adapted from the Michael Cunningham novel, A Home at the End of the World reveals a softer side of Farrell that gives credence to his versatility as an actor. As the emotionally complex Bobby Morrow, he truly helps bring this story of love and friendship to life. You should go back to Claire. Oh man. I don't want to leave you alone. Number 3. Private Roland Boz, Tigerland It may be a small war drama, but Tigerland makes a big impact thanks to its actors' incredible performances. You are pissing your life away! Well, I don't need the f***ing army and I don't need the f***ing war to tell me that, sir! Much credit should be given to Farrell, who brings such humanity to his character that the role essentially launched his career. While proving himself a compassionate and apt leader, Farrell also develops realistic and complex relationships with his fellow soldiers that keep us highly engrossed in the tale. What else are you gonna do? Send us a beer, no? <laughs> late for that shit. Number two, Captain John Smith, The New World. Despite disappointing box office returns, it's hard to deny that Terrence Malick's historical vision of the Jamestown settlement is one visually spectacular film. At the heart of the story is Pocahontas, who develops a romance with the rugged John Smith. Eyes. Eyes. Farrell portrays Smith with strength, power, and emotion. In short, everything that the captain should and needs to be. Had she not fed us, you would have starved. She's been the instrument to preserve this colony from disaster. Number one, Ray in Bruges. If I'd grown up on a farm and was retarded, Bruges might impress me, but I didn't, so it doesn't. Much of this black comedy's praise is heaped onto its cast, and for good reason. As a pair of Irish hitmen in hiding, Farrell and his partner in crime, Brendan Gleeson, display a hell of a lot of chemistry, despite the constant bickering. I mean, what have you knew karate say? You said he was a lollipop man. He was a lollipop man. What's a lollipop man doing no karate? But it's Farrell's turn as the frenzied, guilt-ridden Ray that won him the Golden Globe for Best Actor. So let's be honest, this hilariously dark film wouldn't be the same without him. You two are weird. Would you like some cocaine? Do you agree with our list? This is how you want to end it. What's your favorite Colin Farrell performance? Be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com for more entertaining top tens. Come on, come on. Yeah, go on, in you go. Get in the I'm a green belt, mother What? Yeah, I, okay. What's up? My name is Chad. Nice to meet you.